Well, this all raises another question that we'll just tag on to this one. That's the harpazo, the rapture as it's commonly called. People say, well, the rapture is not in the Bible. It is in the Latin Bible. We use, if you, the, the term in the, in the text is harpazo in the Greek, which means the great snatch, to be forcibly snatched away. In the Latin, it was rapturo, and, and that's where we get the term rapture. This view has to be acknowledged as the most preposterous belief in biblical Christianity. Let's take a look at it, where it comes from. Remember in the upper room, the night that, that uh, he was going to be betray he was betrayed in Gethsemane? They're up in the upper room. In John 14, Jesus says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He's not going to prepare a place for everybody, his believers. I, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. What a promise. He is going to receive us. Not everybody, the believers. Paul will expand on this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, where Paul tells the Thessalonians, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. He's using a euphemism for death there. See, the, the, the Thessalonian believers were upset because some of their friends had died. And they were concerned because, you know, they all expecting that the Lord would come in. By the way, a very key point, all through the scripture, they expected him at any moment. There's a doctrine of eminence. But they're all upset because some of the people have died. They figured, gee, they've missed the, the big opportunity. He says, no, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So again, he's talking about believers here. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You can tell John was anticipating that he would be also alive. It might happen, it might happen that soon. Now this is... One, one of several key passages about the harpazo, and that comes from the word caught up in the Greek. The word there is harpazo. And uh, if you don't believe in the rapture, you've got to tear this out of your Bible. There's no, there's the, the more you study it, the, you, can't, you can't escape the explicitness of it. Now, when we get to 1 Corinthians 15, which is the famous resurrection chapter that Paul writes about, he makes another allusion to the same thing. He says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality. There will be a time when there will be some of His own on the earth still alive that, not, that have not died that will be passed from their existing state into the resurrection body in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye. That's not a blink of an eye. It's probably 10 to the minus 43 uh, seconds, but that's another relation. There's particle physicists would have an explanation for that. But anyway, and, and this, is, this is the trumpet of God. This is not the trumpet judgments of Revelation. Don't fall in that trap. That's a whole different issue. Okay. Uh, so this is, the, this is the rapture passage. We'll come back to this in a minute. Uh, the, the issue is uh, as a, as a, an issue. First and second Thessalonians are the most important eschatological epistles in the New Testament uh, dealing with the end times. We've looked at 1 Thessalonians. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians because it's going to fill in some of the other issues here and it'll deal with the order of events for us. Paul says, Let no man deceive you by any means for that day, speaking of the day of the Lord, this final second coming, final consummation, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Let me back up. It, you probably need some context for 2 Thessalonians. Paul wrote the first letter to Thessalonians. By the way, Paul taught the Thessalonians for about three weeks. Then he writes a letter later to them and reminds them of things he taught them in the first three weeks of the Christian walk. 
the rapture and all of that. All the things he mentioned in 1 Thessalonians, he's reminding of things he taught them earlier. Suddenly, as time goes on, they're all upset because the persecutions of Nero and what have you have started. And uh, they think that the tribulation has started. And they're really unglued. Why are they unglued? Well, for that to be one of two reasons. Either they were mistaught that they're going through the tribulation, or they missed the rapture. In other words, they, they feel they've been mistaught. They've either missed the rapture or somehow they're... Because they, they think the great tribulation started. Paul writes in 2 Thessalonians... In fact, there was a letter apparently circulating that was a forgery by Paul. And he puts them straight. Don't be so upset as if... As even by a letter, as if from us. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, the end day, shall not come except there be a falling away at apostasy first. And that, man, that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition... He tells us a little bit more about this guy who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. That's part of the abomination of desolation thing we talked about last time. And Paul reminds us, remind you, remember you not that when I was yet with you I told you these things? And, know ye, and now ye know what restraineth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now restraineth will restrain until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked one be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. The restrainer. Now this is where the scholars start, okay, who is this restrainer? Turns out when you study both the Greek of the passage and also understand the theology behind it, there can only one, be one person, that's the Holy Spirit. He's the only one that restrains sins. Angels don't restrain sin. The Holy Spirit does. And both from the grammar, both the neuter and the masculine usage of the terms, it's, it's, it, we don't have time to develop the whole thing. But the order of events is important. What Paul is saying here is the day of the Lord is the big debate. When is the day of the Lord? Have we gotten to the day of the Lord? He says, no. For that day shall not come except there be a falling away first, an apostasy. He who now restrains will restrain until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked one be revealed. Verse 8. In other words, there's an apostasy. The restrainer is removed. The Holy Spirit, in, in, in the sense that he's in, in, in the indwelling of the believers. Then the man of sin will be revealed. And then the day of the Lord. Remember the 70th week of Daniel is defined by a covenant being enforced by the man of sin. This passage says that a precondition to his being revealed is that the restrainer, that is the Holy Spirit, as he indwells the body of Christ, be removed. When you study all the patches of passages dealing with the second coming kind of things, you'll discover they fall in two groups. There's a couple of dozen that talk about the second coming where Christ comes in power and glory, but there's a whole other group that are different, that speak of an event that's quite in contrast to the one we've just talked about, the rapture. Let, rather than go through all the verses in the t time we have, let me just summarize the differences. In one case, there's a translation of believers. The second coming, there's no translation involved. In the rapture, the translated saints go to heaven. At the second coming, the translated saints return to the earth with him. In the rapture, there's no talk about judgment of the earth. There's a lot of other issues going on. There's judgment of believers getting the rewards. It's a whole different issue. In the second coming, of course, one of the big things is that the, the earth is judged. The rapture is imminent. It can happen at any moment. There are no signs that precede the rapture. It could happen before this meeting's over tonight. The second coming follows a definite series of predicted events. The second coming cannot happen for less than seven years. The whole seventh week of Daniel has to unfold yet, plus some other things. Rapture is not in the Old Testament. That's not quite true. There's several hints there, but I want to keep this simple for tonight. Second coming is predicted all through the Old Testament. In fact, the oldest prophecy uttered by a prophecy is of the second coming of Jesus Christ, and that's by Enoch. You won't find it in Genesis 5, you'll find it in Jude, but it's quoted of the second coming by Enoch, before the flood of Noah. Rapture is the believers only. The second coming affects all men on the planet Earth. The rapture occurs before the day of wrath. The second coming concludes the day of wrath. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Rapture has no reference to Satan.